Not sure whether to buy a Starlink or 5G broadband? In this video, we've compared 4G and 5G broadband with satellite internet solutions like Starlink, so you can decide which is best for your specific needs. Before we begin, if you're looking for a 5G internet solution, it's definitely worth checking out the 3 5G hub, which we've linked to in the description. This device offers speeds of up to 700 megabits per second from our testing and comes with unlimited data, and it's also generally very reasonably priced. Click the first link in the description to see the latest deals on the 5G hub on the 3 website. Getting set up with 4G or 5G internet is very easy. When you buy the 5G hub, for example, you get a box with everything included, such as the router, the SIM card, an ethernet cable, and the power cord. To get started, you just insert the SIM in the router, plug it in, and turn it on. The router will then connect to 5G and set up a Wi-Fi network. At this point, there's a bit of experimenting to do to find the best place to put the router to get the best mobile signal. Normally, an upstairs windowsill is the best place for it. Once that's done, you're online and ready to go. With Starlink, it's a bit more complicated. So if you just want to install the satellite on the ground, you can just put it onto its standard base here and begin getting set up. But most of the time, you're going to want to think about how you mount it on a roof or something like that. Starlink has a shop with different mounts you can buy for it. Then there's a bit of hassle to get it up and into the correct location. Or you could hire a handyman or something like that to do it for you. No matter how you're setting it up, You'll need to think about how you'll give your satellite dish the best unobstructed view of the horizon you possibly can. Otherwise, if there's something on the horizon, like trees, this can block your signal to the satellite when the line of sight from the dish to the satellite passes between this obstacle. Once the dish is in place, you can just go through the setup procedure in the Starlink app. The dish will calibrate itself and it will let you know if there's any obstructions on the horizon. When we tested the 5G hub, we typically got download speeds of about 500 to 700 megabits per second, with an upload speed of about 10 megabits per second. This speed test was quite low, and this one was a bit high in terms of average upload speeds. But our 5G signal was quite good, so speeds of about 300 megabits per second are also quite typical. With Starlink, it's normally a bit lower than this. About 100 to 200 megabits is normal, with an upload speed that's maybe a bit higher, about 15 to 25 megabits per second, but it's also common for your download speed to drop to about the 50 megabit range, depending on where the nearest satellite is, and how much bandwidth other Starlink users are using at any given moment. So generally, 5G download speeds are about twice as high as satellite broadband, but it does depend on the network you use. Some 5G networks will throttle their home broadband closer to that 100 to 200 megabit per second range. The big advantage of Starlink is its availability. You can get their satellite broadband service basically anywhere in the UK, just as long as you don't live in a really deep valley or a ditch or something where you can't get a good line of sight to the horizon. On the other hand, 5G is available to about 50 to 60% of the population, although it's unclear how much of this percentage is suitable for home broadband, because if you can only get outdoor 5G signal, this isn't going to be good enough for home broadband. If you're not sure whether you can get 5G or maybe also 4G broadband, come to the first link in the description and click check coverage here. Then put in your postcode here, and 3 will let you know whether you can get 4G or 5G broadband at your address. So when we tested the 3 5G hub, we would typically get a latency of about 35 to 45 milliseconds staying closer to this 35 range when plugged into the router with an ethernet cable. We tested a few different online games and found the experience was generally very smooth. Even for things like Rocket League, which are generally quite ping sensitive, we could play them pretty well and didn't experience any major packet loss or ping spikes. We'd actually say that 5G is pretty good for gaming, unless you're doing something like competitive Counter-Strike, where you really need a ping below about 30 to 40 milliseconds. And with the 5G hub, you can always test it and then return it within 30 days if the ping isn't good enough for your needs. On the other hand, with Starlink, your ping can be a bit variable. It depends where you are in the UK and where the nearest satellite is. A ping in that 40 to 70 millisecond range is quite normal, and you might be able to get 30 to 50 milliseconds if there's not a lot of bandwidth being used on Starlink where you are. The problem is with Starlink, as satellites pass through orbit, your dish will need to switch between them when they get out of range. When this happens, it's normal for your connection to drop out momentarily, which can cause you to completely lag out 
when playing online games. And this switchover does normally happen quite frequently, once every few hours or so. So generally, 4G or 5G internet is a better choice if you want lower, more consistent latency. A 5G internet is also a lot cheaper than Starlink. With the 3 4G hub or 5G hub, you'll pay about £25 per month, although at the time of recording this they're running a 6 month half price offer, or about £28 per month if you want the 1 month plan. With other networks it's a bit more expensive, more like 30 to 40 maybe even £50 a month, depending on how much data you need. So 3 does offer pretty good value on wireless home broadband. If you're considering buying, Make sure to click the first link in the description to check your coverage and see what prices are like at the moment. By comparison, Starlink is generally about two to three times more expensive. At the moment, you'll pay £75 per month for the same unlimited data plan. The other issue is you have to pay quite a large upfront fee for the satellite dish. This is a similar sort of cost to what you pay for a 5G router, but if you buy from three, they're willing to lend you the router free of charge, even on the one month plan. There's no upfront fee on any of these, you'll just have to return the router when you finish using it. So mobile broadband is generally a lot better value for money than satellite internet. With 3, there's no data limits on their 4G or 5G home internet plans. You get unlimited data whether you're using the 4G hub or 5G hub, no matter whether you're on the 1 month or 24 month plan. This isn't always the case with other providers like EE or Vodafone. They normally have plans with a 200 or 300 gigabyte monthly usage limit, and you'll have to pay more for unlimited data, which again is why 3 offers the best value on the market at the moment. And it's a similar story with Starlink. On the plans that most people are using, you'll get unlimited data. It's just, if you want to use it on a boat, they'll begin to charge you more for these data plans. There's something worth mentioning here though that applies to both internet solutions. So when you buy one of these internet services, it'll normally come with a fair use policy. Basically, it just gives the provider wiggle room if you use huge amounts of data to potentially begin throttling your traffic a bit. So what Starlink is saying here is basically they may need to deprioritize your traffic if you use too much data. You shouldn't have any problems until you reach at least a terabyte a month of usage. But around this point, depending on how much traffic is on the network where you are, you might find your traffic deprioritized, resulting in slower speeds. It's the same sort of thing with 5G internet. If you're using enormous amounts of data, they might throttle you a bit. The problem is Starlink's network is a bit more fragile at the moment, so they're a bit more likely to take notice, because they need to be a bit more careful with how much data is being used to ensure that all customers have a good experience. On Windows, if you go to settings and then put in status, go to network status, you can see here how much data you've actually used. As long as you're not using more than a thousand gigabytes a month or a terabyte across all your devices on a consistent basis, you shouldn't have any problems with hitting data limits on 5G internet or Starlink. So in conclusion, 4G or 5G internet is a better choice in most situations. It offers faster speeds, lower, more consistent latency, and is easier to set up. And it's also a lot cheaper, especially if you can get 3 5G in your area. The big advantage to satellite internet services like Starlink is they're available basically anywhere in the UK. In a lot of places, it offers the fastest way of getting online on a consistent basis. Just it's less consistent than 5G, and doesn't offer the same download speeds at the moment. Remember, if you're considering using 4G or 5G internet, click the first link in the description to see the best deals on the 4G hub and 5G hub from 3 on the market at the moment. And if you have any questions about the differences between 5G internet and satellite broadband, leave a comment below and we'll get back to you.